The record business can be brutal. Those of you who watch this channel may have heard me say before that the industry eats its young. Case in point, the 1968 number one hit, Green Tambourine, which was written by Paul Lecca and Shelley Pins, who were not members of the group that recorded it, called the Lemon Pipers. This, in of itself, isn't unusual, yet it is but the tip of the iceberg that was the recording contract between Buddha Records and the Lemon Pipers. The Lemon Pipers were five guys from Cincinnati, Ohio. Singer Ivan Brown, guitarist Bill Bartlett, keyboardist R.G. Nave, bassist Steve Walmsley, and drummer William Albaugh. They came together, as most young rock bands do, as friends wanting to make some music and possibly break into the music business. The hippie music style of the day was psychedelic rock, and that's what the guys wanted their band to play. During the summer of 1967, the band began to enjoy success among the hippies living in the Cincinnati area. In December of that year, they opened for Jefferson Airplane, and having just released a record through a deal with Buddha Records, was looking forward to future success. A subsidiary of Kama Sutra Records, Buddha Records, was launched in early 1967. Starting out, the label was a distributor for a new genre called bubblegum rock, which included groups such as the 1910 Fruit Gum Company and the Ohio Express, both of which produced high volume sales, but neither of which had a number one hit in the U.S. Buddha Records was eager for that label's first number one U.S. hit record. Well, right after signing the contract, the guys met with record producer Paul Lecca at the home of drummer William Albaugh's mother. Well, Lekka brought a song with him to be the group's first recording with Buddha Records. He blocked out the chords on the piano and sang the melody for them. This was not the music that the guys expected to record. It was, in fact, a song crafted for the pop music market to conform to Buddha Records' current selling format. The band's reaction to the song was universally and predictably negative, but Lekka assured them that if they didn't record the song, they wouldn't have a contract with Buddha Records. Faced with this ultimatum, the band decided to go ahead with the recording and get their foot in the door in the big time record business. In late November 1967, the band convened at Cleveland Recording Company on the fourth floor of the Lowe's State Theater Building in Cleveland, Ohio. As it turned out, not only was Paul Lecca the song's co-writer and producer, but he was also the arranger for the session. In fact, the band had no creative latitude whatsoever in the recording details. Lecca had even rented an electric sitar and had Bartlett play it so that the song would have the cliché sitar sound that had permeated pop music at that time. And so it was that the guys finished the recording session and left the studio. It was then Lekka's job to transform the master recording into his vision of a bubblegum pop hit record. He took the tape to New York City, and there he hired a string section, added some other sound effects, and also added a fading echo of the word play in the chorus. Buddha Records began distributing promotional copies of Green Tambourine to AM radio disc jockeys across the United States in late 1967. By February 3, 1968, Green Tambourine had reached the U.S. number one spot and was outselling records by such powerhouses as the Beatles, catapulting the Lemon Pipers into the high-visibility celebrity realm of pop music. Playing a concert was not new for the guys, because they had opened for large acts before they signed the recording contract, so a promotional concert tour appeared to them as familiar ground. At first. The guys barely had time to collect their thoughts before they were measured for stage clothes, booked as the opening act at concert venues, and then found themselves being flown from one concert to another to promote the record. It was exhausting and expensive. In fact, by the end of their first tour, they were $17,000 in the red. This realization transformed the concert tours into affairs that were accommodated by a stretch sedan named the Lemonzine in tandem with an equipment truck. The more irritating part might have been 
that the image of the band, based upon Green Tambourine, clashed with their psychedelic rock roots, causing stress and disappointment within their audiences. Eventually, the cumulative stress of traveling in close quarters and performing the hated Green Tambourine in conflict with their true musical direction pushed them to the ultimate decision of refusing to play the song. Ivan Brown's later quote was, We got famous for playing crap. With a failed second album for Buddha and stress-induced acrimony between the band members, the Lemon Pipers quietly broke up in December 1968, a mere one year after launch as the stereotypical one-hit wonders. After the breakup, most of the guys just went back to school. But Bill Bartlett joined the group called Ram Jam, who became known for the song Black Betty. Producer and performer Paul Lecca went on to co-write another one-hit wonder song called Na Na Hey Hey Kiss Him Goodbye, which was credited to the fictional band Steam, hastily assembled in 1969 to promote that record. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if so, please click that like button and leave a comment on the video to let me know what you think. This would also be a great time to subscribe to my channel if you like what I do here, and be sure to click the top notification bell on the selection to make sure that you are notified when I publish new content, which is usually several times a week. Once you have subscribed, you also have the option to join the channel as a Trooper Fellow. This will place a sticker on your comments so that I will see them first and give them priority responses. For some reason, that little button doesn't appear on mobile devices. You have to open the session on a desktop version of YouTube, and that's where you click on it. I also invite you to submit suggestions for pop music subjects spanning from the 1950s through the 1970s. Just leave a comment on this video or you can email me at theguitartrooper at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching.